Hello everybody, my name is Joseph Kraus. Today I'm going to make a YouTube video in response to the New York Times article. So I have here a physical copy, it's a little bit ripped and everything, but uh, I'm a little late. I know some of you guys have been waiting for this video for a long time, but today we're finally going to make it. Make sure you watch till the end of this video. And I probably will make a follow up, like a part two of the video um, based on what you guys want. Let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, please subscribe, like this video. So I was um, mentioned in this article the the New York Times article was published um oddly on September 11 in 2022 um yeah so it had a a quote from me saying no point of advantage so i wanted to talk a little bit more about that um and say what i think about the article and you know stuff like that so so what it says let me let me see if i can show you guys and it's been like a couple of years now. i don't know if a couple of years but it's been a while since i have my youtube channel i still haven't figured out how to edit videos so i'll have to see if i can open here and show you um the, where it mentioned specifically me in the article. So, here we go. So it says, no point of advantage. So I don't know if you guys will be able to see in the video because it shows the other way around. But, uh, yeah. So that's where it talks about me and there's a big photo here as well of me. So, um, all right, let's let's get into the video. Really good editing skills, huh? Uh, so basically, what's going on is, um, there's a Hasidic Jewish community. Um, they are located in a couple of places, specifically Satmar and some other smaller, um, you know, sub branches or whatever you want to call it. Um, one of them is located in Brooklyn and the other one, Brooklyn, New York. The other one is, is located in Orange County, New York. Um, I don't know if it's still part of Monroe, but it's called Curious Joel. Um, that's where I grew up in Curious Joel. It's like upstate. It's about a hour or half an hour, hour and a half drive from New York City. Um, yeah, but my whole life, I never went out of that community. Like I never went to the city or anywhere. So I may be growing up in a worldly environment but i never saw anything if that makes any sense we grew up in the middle of like trees and a forest it was like a gate around the whole community and that's all i knew that's all i see so everything was controlled um and we didn't get any secular education or anything like that and um what else? Yeah, it was um very, very controlled, sad life for most people. And even the people who had an, a normal life in there was, you know, just maybe they, they weren't suffering as much. But it's, it's not very good. You know, I consider it to be a cult. Um, so, yeah. Now, the problem is when you leave that community, you, you lose everything. So... Um, and when you don't get an education, it's even, it makes it even harder to leave, um, or impossible to leave. And if you do leave, 
um it's designed in a way so you can't leave because that's how they have control it's like think about it the people who are in control of that community of that cult they make money and power by having more people in there so they don't want them to leave so that's part of the way how they can control all these people to live there so when you leave you lose your friends and family you lose your you know when you're in that community you may be getting like community jobs or careers you know like working within the community so you won't be able to work in there anymore right so you lose um your emotional and physical support right so so nobody um will help you if you have an emotional problem um nobody will help you with anything let's say you need you need help with a physical thing right i don't know like let's say you have to move something a box whatever it is you all of a sudden you may be 18 years old whatever your age is when you leave whatever you had since you were a kid you know people build a net a network and friends family um community all everything is gone because everybody breaks up the communications and that's how it works that's what they're told to do um so you lose your housing no more no place to live as soon as you leave you can't live you're homeless all right overnight you lose food where are you gonna eat next right um, and you lose social skills and intelligence. So that means that, let's say, there's a culture in a way how people live in certain countries or places in the world, right? And in that place, it's very third world country-like. So imagine all of a sudden, maybe I grew up in New York. Maybe it was only... Maybe some people even grow up in the city, but I... For me, it was like a two-hour drive, let's say, but still, you never see anything. So all of a sudden, you are in this world where you're an outcast. You're, you know what I mean? You're not really, you don't know how to do anything. And you don't, you, you're, you, you may have been intelligent or even just normal before, but all of a sudden, you're this different weird person trying to figure everything out so that's the problem um i think it's a crime to not give education to these kids because if they do leave that's how they end up now some people say well so they don't have to leave so then is is it another crime to keep people hostage like that um by themselves you know you can't force people to live a certain way so you need to give a person a choice um and i don't even say give them a choice i just say you know let them decide give them the tools to have a choice right i don't say you have to tell them when they turn 13 or 18 or whatever you want to leave we're going to help you leave or what i don't expect them to do that but they should have the basic skills, at least language and basic mathematical and stuff. So, because otherwise, right now, I can't even use a GPS. I don't even know how to get to places. So, or even how to find a person to help me. So, it's like when a kid in that community gets physically or emotionally hurt, they can't even reach out to somebody and ask for help. So they are, what's it called? They, they're, you know, they don't even know how to call the police or how to tell anybody. So they have to go with what happens. So if they get abused, whatever, the community don't want anybody to know there is abuse going on. So the kid is just gonna have to shut up and, you know, that's how they operate. So, and, and a lot of people say that, oh, they're, the community is very successful. They're, they're, there's no poor people, everybody, even though they don't get education. The truth is, I'll tell you, I grew up in there. Most of the people 
when have to depend on welfare on what's it called food stamps and when there is like they call it a khalika when they give away free food and there's not like not like just free food like everybody likes free food i'm talking about cheap stuff like to um potatoes and onions maybe right like a little bit of potatoes and onions raw most of the people are so poor that they have to go take it to survive so i remember there will be a truck and come and give free potatoes and onions and even my family took it and by the way my family from what i believed and what i saw were like considered in the top five finan top five percent financially so that means that other people in the neighborhood or in the community were way poor way more poor Maybe we weren't exactly the top five, but we definitely did a little bit better than the rest. And there were still a lot of times no food at home to eat. So you have little kids at home and there's no food, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's a big problem. Um, and the like the time says here. I try to show you on the camera, but it doesn't, you can't read it this way, but it says 99% of these kids fail their tests. So when, when you give them a test and, and that's, that's a crazy number because like any, anywhere else, <laughs> that's like basically saying that nobody passed 99% is like next level. So yeah, this needs to change. And it's a big problem going on. And here's the video. There will be a part two. Let me know in the comments what you want to see. Um, again, my name is Joseph Kraus. I grew up in the Hasidic Jewish community, a.k.a. Yossi Kraus. Um, please follow. Follow me here. I also have an Instagram, Joseph Kraus 18. And I'm also on TikTok, Joseph Kraus 18. That's the username, Joseph Kraus 18. And uh, yeah, there's links and everything, or just search it up and subscribe here. Turn on the notifications so you get notified whenever I upload a new YouTube video. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Thank you. Bye.